The fundamental counting principle says if there are m ways for one activity to occur and n ways for a second activity to occur, then multiplying m times n will give you the total possible outcomes of both occurring. So for example, a restaurant offers a three-course meal where you can choose one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert. There are five appetizers to choose from, eight entrees, and three desserts. How many possible three-course meals can you choose from? In this case, all we have to do is take the number that we have in each category and multiply everything together. So we have five appetizers, eight entrees, and three desserts. So we multiply five times eight times three. Five times eight is 40, and 40 times three is 120. So there's 120 possible meals to choose from. Some other counting techniques are permutations and combinations. These are both ways of ordering sets. And the important question you need to ask yourself is, does the order of the set matter? For permutation, the order matters. Some examples are races, finishing first, second, and third, choosing officers such as a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer, trying to calculate pin numbers, and arranging books on a shelf. Two things can happen with permutation. We can either order everything in the set, or we can just choose to take a couple things from the set and order those. In our first example, it says in a race with five runners, how many ways can the runners finish? So in this case, we're ordering all five runners. And to do that, we're going to take the number we have, which is five, and we say five factorial. Now what a factorial means is you're going to take the number that you're starting with and you're going to keep multiplying by every number that's smaller than it until you get to one. So five factorial means five times four times three times two times one. Five times four is 20, 20 times three is 60, and 60 times two is 120. So they can place in 120 different ways. Now we're going to have a similar question, but in this case we only care about first, second, and third place. And it says in a race with five runners, how many ways can the runners finish first, second, or third? In this case we're not ordering all five of the runners, just a couple of them. In your calculator there's often a button that will do this for you. In that case, we would say we're taking our five runners. There should be some function for permutation. It's usually NPR. And if we're choosing three people, we would say three. And the calculator will do it for us. However, right now we don't have a calculator, so we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. And that's using this formula here. We're going to take N factorial, which is how many runners we have, so five runners. And then this n minus k is the number of runners minus the number of people we're actually taking in our set. So it would look like 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial, okay, which is really 5 factorial over 2 factorial. And we're not actually going to multiply anything yet. I'm just going to write it out. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then over here in the bottom we have 2 times 1. And in these cases of permutations, and you'll find the same thing happens in combination, we can often cancel out some common factors in our numerator and our denominator. So over here we have 2's and 1's that we can cross off, which means we are really just left with 5 times 4 times 3. 5 times 4 is 20, and 20 times 3 is 60. So the runners can finish first, second, or third in 60 different ways. Now for combination, the order does not matter. For example, if you're choosing a committee, which is just a group to represent people, where no person has a different role than everyone else, 
that's a combination because it doesn't matter in what order you choose those people. You might also see it picking pairs or groups. That's a combination. So let's look at this example. How many ways can two names be chosen from 10 in a raffle if only one entry per person is allowed? So in this case, we're starting with 10, but we're choosing two names. So once again, if we had a calculator, we would say we're taking 10 people the button you often press is NCR, C for combination this time, and two people at a time. Okay, but let's use our formula. It's very similar to our permutation formula, except we're adding an extra K factorial at the end. So we're going to say 10 factorial over 10 minus 2 factorial, and our K is 2 factorial. That would be 10 factorial, 10 minus 2 is 8. And now let's write it out. We have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then another 2 times 1. And while it looks like a lot, we see we have an 8 and an 8, 7 and a 7. Okay, and a lot of our numbers will divide out. So really we're left with 90, 10 times 9, over 2 times 1, which is 2, and 90 over 2 is 45.